Today's lecture is about shooting in low light. Since photography means writing with light, it stands to reason that shooting in low light is going to introduce some problems and make it a little bit more difficult to make a picture, but you shouldn't let that stop you because you can get some really nice pictures and really nice effects if you understand what you're doing shooting in the dark. We've already talked about shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and flash, and we'll be talking more about those today to understand how to use those features of the camera to get the effect that you want in low light. Shooting in low light requires a creative approach. You're going to need to analyze the light sources that are available to you and the light sources that you brought with you, such as your flash. Think about the direction of the light and what kind of effect you want, and then use the light to your advantage. A couple of the basics. Uh, low light means there's little room for maneuver. You're often going to need to use a slow shutter speed and a wide aperture, and that can create some problems for you. You might um, have blur, camera shake. Um, you're gonna if you're using a wide aperture, you're gonna have selective focus, so you're not going to be able to get the entire scene in focus. But we'll talk about some of the ways that you can get around those problems. Um, you might also need to boost your ISO, which can sort of degrade picture quality, but can also create a nice effect as well. And we often try to avoid using flash because it gives that washed out look to a picture, but there are creative ways to use the flash uh, to get the picture you want. This picture I took uh, while hiking near Phoenix, Arizona, and it was around dusk, so it was getting pretty dark. I used a slow shutter speed and panned with the subject to keep the runner relatively sharp and still <clears throat> have that nice um, sunset lighting. Uh, by, by using a slow shutter speed and using uh, the blur to the picture, uh, still, I, I captured that sense of motion that was there in the scene. So don't be afraid to use a slow shutter speed to capture that, that effect. Your camera comes equipped with a light meter, and usually there are several settings for your light meter. Um, usually we use matrix metering, which sort of evaluates the entire scene and exposes to get both the lights and the darks. However, when you're shooting in the dark, you might want to use a spot meter um, setting in order to only expose for the subject and let the rest of the picture fall into darkness. Um, spot metering is good for concert photography, for performances, that kind of thing, because often the subject is illuminated by a spotlight. So use your spot metering to only expose for the subject. As in this picture where I focused on the subject using spot metering and was able to capture him and let the rest of the picture fall away into blackness, which is exactly what the scene looked like. So if I had used um, matrix metering in this case, it would have tried to expose in those shadows and the subject would have been overexposed in that case. Same scene, different performer. Again, use spot metering to only expose for her face. This was at a uh, demonstration in Seoul, South Korea in 2008. That night, the boys are holding candles. They, they were the only source of illumination, and I, I wanted to use that. So instead of using a flash here, I just let the, let the candles be my light source and use spot metering to expose for the boys faces and that creates economy to the picture there's it, it reduces the the background noise and you know lets us clearly focus on the subjects this was a very dark scene and I, I wanted to expose for the girl's face I used a wide aperture and a very slow shutter speed of one tenth of a second uh, I was lucky to get this as sharp as it was because if you're at one tenth of a second, it's very difficult to hold this, the camera still enough um, and, and not get camera shake. So, um, you know, usually I wouldn't recommend hand holding at one tenth of a second, but it is, it is possible to do. 
Here again, I used a fairly wide aperture of f3.5. And if you stand back a little bit from your subjects, you're still going to get most of the scene pretty sharp. Um, if I was up close to one of them using a wide aperture, only the subject would be in focus and the background would be blurred. But if you're using a wide angle lens and if you're back a little bit far, you can still get pretty sharp um, pictures even at a wide aperture. In this photograph, I used the background light, that's an electronic billboard, and I metered off of the background and let the camera expose just for the background and the, and the subject then falls into silhouette, which can be a nice effect and is often useful in low light situations. Um, I should mention that many, camera, many of your cameras might not have very wide apertures. Um, you often need certain kinds of lenses, fast lenses we, as we call them, um, to get really wide apertures. So, you know, if you're thinking about investing in, in an SLR camera, think about the lenses that you want to get and try to get a fast lens with a very wide aperture. Now, sometimes you're just going to want to go ahead and use the slow shutter speed and, and let the subject blur a little bit because that can be a, an effective way to show motion in a scene. So in this case, I, I use a slow shutter speed and just let the subject blur a little bit. And, and really, that is, that's what I wanted. I, I wanted to show that action. And, uh, and motion blur is an effective way to do that. I love to shoot with only available light. Um, it's a challenge, but can be... Can, you can get some really nice pictures. So, so look around, search for sources of illumination, uh, get creative with the light that's there. You might need to wait. You wait for your subject to enter a lit area, or you can position them there if you're doing like a portrait or that kind of thing. Um, always pay attention to the direction of the light. Sometimes you're going to want a silhouette. You might want side lighting. You might want front lighting. So just as in all kinds of photography, remember the direction of the light. This picture was taken in a power plant in southern Indiana, and there's not a lot of light in there. It's a pretty dark, dirty place, but um, there are sources of illumination. So in this case, I just waited for this uh, control operator um, to, to enter the lit area and snap the picture when he was there. It does take patience. This is taken on a street in Pusan, South Korea at night. And uh, there's these booths set up, shopping, people can shop for jewelry and clothes and that kind of thing. And I just waited for, for the woman to enter uh, a lit area and took the picture. Here's an example of side lighting. There's only sort of one one uh, source of illumination, which was the sun coming in from the side. And, uh, you know, just a found moment. Relatively dark, but I caught a little side light there. And even, in, even though it's at night, there's always some source of illumination. Even if it's just the stars or the moon. Another street picture at night using only available light I used a very wide aperture which is uh, you know causes my subject in the foreground to be sharp but the two guys in the back are a little bit blurred out a little bit more blurry anyhow but again this is just available light the sky is a light source you can think of uh, the outdoors as a studio with the, the sky as your light box. And uh, the sunset, obviously, is a very beautiful scene. And I use that to create this silhouette effect with these hikers um, on Camelback Mountain in Phoenix.